hi guys welcome back to the channel this is the part two and a continuation from the previous um video i put out there so if you've not seen the part one you have to go back and watch the part one before continuing with the part two now in this uh, particular tutorial i'll be showing you how to sew this corset and to make invisible boning channels for your corset and padding of the corset keep on watching so there's one very important thing when you're making a corset very very important first off if your corset is um going to be on the outside if you're not using the main fabric that is you're buying an additional fabric instead of using a bridal satin i would advise to use a crepe fabric it's a game changer trust me guys the next thing is infuse it with um a cutting st we call it cutting st in nigeria it's called feasible interfacing um or uh, it's called woven woven interfacing so it's called different names in different places but i think these two are the most popular um names that it's called so make sure to always use it. It stabilizes the fabric and gives it more structure. If you're using a velvet fabric, this is also a must. You do that. Even if you're using bridal satin or door face satin, you can always use your um so guys, it's time for us to cut our patterns. Okay, guys, you can see that I have um, all the patterns laid down and I went ahead to add one inch seam allowance all around the pattern. This is because of the way I want to pipe the boning. But half an inch allowance is okay. If you feel like you want to use up to an inch, it's also okay. And I added it on both sides that will be joining on each part. The only place that was not necessary for me to put was the center back of the um the dress this will be the center back but i'm just leaving it there because it's better to have too much than to have too little so after doing that we'll go ahead and cut After cutting all the all of the pieces that you need for this corset, you go ahead and join them together the way you would join any normal pattern that you cut. You join one to two, two to three, four, three to four, four to five. You understand, you know the drill. So after joining all of those pieces together, the next thing is for us to get that shape that we have on the on the upper part because the upper part you're not doing a straight cut or that normal basque corset um cut we're doing like an asymmetric cut so here i went ahead to pin it on my mannequin and i brought back my pattern piece to determine where my waist line is so i will know where the position of my waist is so after getting the position of the waist line i ruled a, a straight line across so that i'll be able to use my eyes to eyeball whatever i am working on whatever i'm doing so i just went ahead to you know pin them in place make sure everything aligns properly so that my lines will be as straight as um as possible so after um looking at the position where i want my 
asymmetric line to be i decided to draw my waistline across so i would know the depth of that asymmetric line that i want here i did about three inches downwards you can do up to five inches downwards it's allowed depends on how deep you want it to be then you use your eyes to just eyeball how low you want it to be or the design you want at this point in time so whatever design you want to make you use your eyes to eyeball it and you just um draw it this is where your creative your creativity comes to play so after doing that i'm just checking to see that i have the proper um shape that i want and then you connect it to the back line now remember when connecting it to the back line because it's not straight you have a little encroaching on the back side if you don't want it to be little like if you want the same thing that you have on that side then you make it as deep as you want it on the back side i don't know if i'm making sense you know the back side is supposed to be straight but because the front line is asymmetric if you also want the back to be asymmetric fine you do that if you don't want it just look for a way to connect it it will still encroach on the back side but not too much after doing all of that and you're um, okay with what you have you're good to go don't mind the collapsing bust is because there's nothing there to support it yet but soon enough you'll see what fire and it opened up took, took thai food off we've already put thai food on the map in atlanta but we love to bring it nationwide yeah, good luck chefs <laughs> All right, so we're getting sort of to taco style on both sides. Perfect technique to use for this tuna, just lightly grilled. Right, you never want to overcook this tuna. You just destroy the fish. Juan Carlos has a little tomatillo salsa for the tuna. Cut it in four and straight to the pan. Two minutes on each side. Should be good. Didi is going with what she's calling a Thai salad. My mouth's watering. Think about it. And then she actually has a big piece of tuna that she's gonna sear whole. She's kind of smart. And slice it. Like you can slice it. Yeah. 10 minutes left, I'm going to go check them out. Careful, because they're drinking over there, Chef. Hey, how are you? Hi, good. How are you? That's a big hunk of tuna. Yeah, it is. Wow. Beautiful. What do you have in here? Fish sauce, sugar, lime. Wow. Ooh, I like that. Good flavors. Not there yet. Juan Carlos, I saw you were making that salsa. What do you have in it? And why not? There's other little tequila. Ella, there's more tequila going into the sauce now. Why not? This is pretty good. I guess there's no shots for me. I don't know what happened. On a hot time, you want to bring your own shots? Shots, 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 shots. Five minutes left, chefs. Five minutes. Garlic chips are really good. We didn't get a tartar to touch it. So we chop my garlic and put it right in the fryer. It's only when I'm two minutes. So both pieces of tuna seem to be cooked really well. Juan Carlos says it's nice and rare in the center. I haven't seen Didi cut into it yet. Two and a half minutes. I slice my tuna and I see it's cooked perfectly. Now lay it on top of the lettuce and the cabbage. The next thing is for us to part that bust side now. You'll be wondering, what do I mean by pad? And I'm bringing out paper. Yes, you bring out the paper. You fold into four like you're cutting a full circle because you're actually cutting a full circle. Now, after folding into two, you fold again into another two like you would for any full circle. The distance between the person's bust that you're working on, mine is three inches. So if you're working with someone's bust of distance between the bust and the under bust of four inches, you use four inches to draft out your full circle but mine is three inches so i'm using three inches you just mark three inches all around the paper like you would for any circle skirt or circle whatever that you're drawing so when you measure your three inches all around the paper or four inches de depending on the size of bust you're working on by the time you do that you have a full circle and then you rule a line connecting those dotted lines together, making sure to have a, a nice enough shape for your circle because this is what we'll be using to pad the bust. Now we'll be using this circle that we'll cut out to cut ST. Remember the cutting ST I showed you earlier on that we used on our crepe fabric. 
that's what we'll be using it to cut out the cutting st yeah you can use the nylon st if you want but cutting is the best so you use it to cut out the the st like i said earlier and i cut out eight pieces four pieces on each bust you can do more if you want after doing that you go ahead and attach it one at a time on the bust part of your of your dress now you connect it from the under bust upwards you don't need to measure the upper part just make sure you start from the under bust not below the under bust directly on the under bust and then as you iron from the back side from the wrong side you also iron from the right side so that everything will be smooth and arranged when you're doing corset ironing is one is the most important part of your corset of corset making so you can see this part that I've padded is already standing on its own while the other part is still collapsing. So now let's do the other part together. Now, like I said earlier, you'll be joining it from the under bust part upwards. N now make sure your fabric is straight and you're using a bust ham like I am or a bust ball and you join it one at a time. Do not join them all at the same time. Use a bust ball so that you not have a flat bust or a rumpled bust. So when you use a bust ball to support it, it will give you a smooth finish when you're done. So you keep um, piling it up one at a time until you have them all stuck together. If you did eight pieces for each bust, you do them one at a time as well. Now, as you iron from the wrong side, like I earlier said, you also iron from the right side so as to smoothen off any rumpled part because when you use ST, you can easily rumple your fabric. So you need to make sure they all come out smooth and nice. So you can see, I went back again with my iron. I kept on ironing and ironing to make sure everything comes out straight, smooth, nice, and um, pleasing to the eyes because you, you don't have to start covering your mistakes with appliques you have to avoid those mistakes i hope i'm making sense so you go back with your iron and iron properly make sure you have the proper ironing tools when you're working with corsets as you can see now that we have our bust all standing and there's no bust pad inside of it you can see next thing is to go ahead and trace out the um yoke that we had earlier on for the pattern if you've not watched the pattern making of this video you're wrong go back and watch it so you understand this so you cut out the so i went ahead to add my yoke and then i just sandwich it in between the lining piece and the main bodies the lining piece and the main bodies and then I sewed it all up and then I went ahead to notch so by the time you flip you'll have a clean finish you have a clean finish then make sure to top stitch top stitch which I'll be doing in a moment before then so here I'm just aligning it together with the face fabric so I'll be able to cut out the same shape because you want the same shape for both the face fabric and the lining piece so just align it all up and cut here we'll be making the invisible um boning channel like i said that we'll be doing earlier on in this video now you see some corsets you know there is boning in this corset but you're not seeing any boning line you're not seeing any boning channel how do they do it you would wonder now that is what i'm about to show you here it's a bonus on this tutorial now you just 
you know normally you cover your um boning with masking tape if you do not have a masking tape you can use a small piece like i'm using here like you cut out small squares and you use it and you're good it will not leave the edges exposed now you pick out the seam allowance of your of your um corset the seam allowance that you already have on the inside you pick it up and you attach your boning to the seam allowance alone now because you're attaching it on just the seam allowance you will not have any seam showing on the outer piece or on the face fabric so you can see i'm zooming in so that you see properly what i am doing here so you attach it on just the seam allowance it's easy right and you see why they say knowledge is power because if you don't know how it was done it will look like it's something that's difficult but once you get a hang of it you see how easy it becomes so like i said just on the seam allowance you sew the first edge leaving the second edge open we'll be sewing the other edge in a minute but let's concentrate on this first part that we're working on So you can see I have it attached already to that seam allowance. Now to attach the second part, you flip to the other side and just hold only the seam allowance again. Just the seam allowance of this um, particular um, channel you're working on. You um, sew on that seam allowance alone. As you can see me doing now, because you sewed on just the seam allowance, you will not have any seam showing in front of your garment. And it will be structured and it will give you the same result as when you sew the boning channel on the corset itself. So look closely and see. Zoom in and zoom out and see that there is no joining. Now, I want to explain further to you. You can see the back of it. You see the way I held it. That was how I held it when sewing. I sewed only on the seam allowance. I flipped to the other side as well. Move back whatever fabric that is in the way and sew just on the seam allowance. I hope this was clear and well understood. Let me know in the comment section if you understand what I did here and if this was helpful. I'll be waiting for your comments. So guys, after doing this, you do that for all other channels. So guys, you join, like you place the upper piece on the lower one. What you do is you make sure you have at least half inch on this straight part because you'll be joining by half inch. So you pin down on the half inch. You pin down on it. What we're doing here is to cut the same shape on the skirt part. And then you make sure the side seam of the skirt matches the side seam of the of the top part of the top part. Then you do the same thing for the second side seam, making sure they match. Once they match, don't worry about the allowance this part is going to take because it needs to come down more than the half inch. The only place you need to make sure is half an inch is the straight part. And then you continue to this other side and you cut. now you can see the shape that we have on the top is already on the skirt so by the time you put it like this it will sit inside so that's the aim you cut the same for the lining and the same for the main um, for the outer piece 